Okay. So hello everyone and welcome to this American Promise training in action series. My name is Marnie Walsh and I'm the empowerment coordinator at American Promise. This is the second meeting of writing letters to the editor team and we're so excited you've joined us. We've got an extraordinary group of American Promise volunteers who are leading our different teams and I'm delighted to introduce Ann Drum, organizer of the American Promise North Texas chapter who has agreed to lead the letters to the editor team. Anne, welcome and please go ahead. Well, thank you, Marnie, and welcome everyone. So the purpose of this letters to the editor team is threefold. We want to inspire you about the importance of spreading the message uh, through letters to the editor and other media. We want to help you be a more confident and enthusiastic letter writer and media activist for our work. And we wanna provide a structure of ongoing support to assist you in succeeding. So even though this is the letters to the editor team, we had always planned on including other forms of media like op-eds and articles in the newspaper. And then Lobby Day last month or this month offered us a great opportunity. So we decided to focus on the last, the last meeting on writing a news release about Lobby Day, and we're gonna return to that tonight um, to help everybody get a news release in your local paper about your Lobby Day experience. So more on that in a moment. But tonight's session is one in a series of five trainings and ongoing teams that meet monthly on topics like friend banking, meeting with elected officials, organizing events, and social media. So Marty, Marty's going to put the team sign up form in the chat and we encourage you to commit to attending the next four monthly sessions of one of those teams or more than one if you like. So tonight's training will be about generating an article in your local paper about your lobby day experience. We had an exciting goal of 100 meetings with members of Congress or their staff during Lobby Days, May 4th, 5th, and 6th. But Lobby Day turned into Lobby Month as some of those meetings are still happening. So the final Lobby Day training was particularly powerful and Marnie will put a link to that Lobby Day training in the chat. So let me tell you what's gonna happen tonight. Uh, we're going to start with a bit of inspiration from Sam, and then I'm going to read through a news release that I submitted to um, some local papers and take some questions or comments about it. And then we'll, we've got one or two other news releases to uh, review with some other volunteers. And then I'm going to role play a call to my editor with Marnie because just writing and sending the news release is not enough. We wanna follow up on the phone if we haven't heard from them in a day or two. And then we're gonna see if there's any questions and conclude the call by giving you a chance to uh, fill, um, fill in the, the sign up form that Marnie has posted in the chat. So we'll take questions throughout. Uh, if you have a question or comment, just you know, like raise your hand or do your digital raised hand and we'll call on you and ask you to unmute yourself. Um, tell us your name and the city where you are from and then mute again after you're finished to help us keep the background, background noise down, thanks. So for our inspiration, um, Sam Daly Harris is gonna share an excerpt from chapter two of his book, Reclaiming Democracy. So it's October, 1981. His organization Results is 18 months old and they decide to host a US Senate candidate forum in April of 1982 and two congressional candidate forums in October of 1982. So Sam was a substitute teacher in the Los Angeles schools and his activist partner in New York City was Cameron Duncan an assistant to the window designer at Bindell's department store. So Sam, would you please proceed and read your excerpt? Sure, I, rather than reading the whole thing, I'm gonna read the end section, but I'm gonna just tell you a little bit more. So boy, um, Cameron and I would spend time on the telephone 
talking to each other and uh, trying to answer the question, who are we to organize candidate forums in the two largest cities in the United States? He was in New York City, I was in Los Angeles. And uh, I'm gonna skip ahead to uh, a meeting I had. When we got to the second forum in LA, I was introduced to and was being interviewed by a reporter for the LA Times. And I was telling her that we had talked to TV editorial writers back in the 80s, TV stations, at least in LA and California, did editorials actually. And many of those TV stations said that hunger was not a state or local issue. And the reporter got very concerned and said, well, did you call the LA Times, her newspaper? And I said, we did, but they never returned our call. And so she told me to call Kay Mills, who was the only woman on the editorial board in the early 80s in Los Angeles. And so this is the, from there in the book, um, my first call to Kay Mills was from a phone booth in the main office of a junior high school in East Los Angeles. I walked in, closed the door behind me and put my grade book and diary on a built-in ledge. We don't usually do editorials on days like World Food Day or Labor Day, she said after a brief conversation, let's pick an issue and do one. I promised to mail materials on key anti-hunger legislation that Bread for the World had been pushing and follow up by phone. The fourth period bell rang, I said goodbye. Now, now this is like what we're up to with, we sent a news release, but did we follow up on the phone to talk to the editor? Um, uh, let's see, I said goodbye and hurried back to my classroom. That telephone call, and the editorial that followed altered my sense of myself and what was possible. It was normal for me to distribute a hundred copies of an action sheet or an important article. But when that first editorial appeared, I remembered thinking, not only has the LA Times written this editorial, but they've made 1 million copies of it and they've delivered it for us too. How marvelous. My early morning dash to the front yard to pick up the LA Times, you remember going to the front yard to get the newspapers, was my run to democracy. I realized that I had the right job to make a difference, substitute teacher. I realized that I had the right training to make a difference, music. I realized that I had the right bank account to make a difference nearly zero. I realized that making a difference wasn't a function of any of these. Making a difference was a function of commitment and persistence. And I will uh, end right there. All right, thank you, Sam. And you know, Sam, I still pick up the throne newspaper off of my doorstep every morning. We're, we're old school here. <laughs> and you still use a pay phone? <laughs> Huh. Haven't used a payphone in a few years. <laughs> I'm finding one. I still get to <laughs> So I would love to get some feedback about Sam's story. What, what inspired you about what you heard? What insight did you have? Somebody share. Just jump in. We're a small group. Well, obviously Sam was committed to what he wanted to accomplish and uh, just, you know, kept talking to, till he found the right person to help make the connection and spread the word. If he'd, have, if he'd have given up after the first try, it would not have gone anywhere and we wouldn't be here with Sam tonight. So persistence. And Linda, where are you from? Rosemont, Minnesota. It's a St. Paul suburb. Rosemont, Minnesota. Great. All right. Anybody else want to comment on Sam's story? Well, go. to have somebody distribute what you've been talking about 
on masks is is quite rewarding. And now I've been published a few times, but mine I think has been published online or in a teeny tiny little local paper, but it's it's very gratifying to see your words up in print it, and to it, see that they, you know, that other people get to see it other than, you know, you and the people you forced to read it over for you. Yeah, Sam, I love the way you put it about the way that, you know, the newspaper distributed, you know, thousands of copies of your flyer for you. So I actually keep one of my letters to the editor that was published. Um, I, I have it taped right up here by my workstation and I can look at it for inspiration. So that's the Dallas Morning News, you know, distributing my letter to a bunch of people. Ben, were you going to say something? Yeah, I was just going to add. So I'm Ben. I'm from Washington. Um, I really love kind of the scrappiness of it. I've, I've met a lot of people in politics who uh, who are fantastic at what they do, and they they don't wait for the perfect time to do everything. They will just say, OK, now is the time to make the call. Uh, let's get to the nearest phone or uh, now is the time to take this action. We're going to do it wherever we are and just we're gonna get it done. And, and that's that's what really makes change. And I appreciate that about the story, so thanks. Scrappiness, I like that word, that's great. So um, I'm gonna show you a news release that, that I sent. And Marnie, I need you to um, enable screen sharing, please. All right, so the first thing I wanna do so I want to just show you, can y'all see my picture montage? So yep. we really encourage everyone when you have a meeting with an elected official or you do some kind of an event, um, you know, anytime you do an event, when we get back to doing events in person, um, but particularly if it's the kind of event that you may want to promote with a news release, um, make sure you take pictures, have somebody on your team who's assigned the responsibility of taking pictures. And so, you know, since we were doing all of our lobby day meetings on Zoom, we were taking these screenshots and then Chris McDonald, our social media guru was putting the, this frame around each of our, of our screenshots so that we could, you know, put it out on Facebook and Twitter with a thank you. So, you know, we would tag our representative. Thank you to Representative Lance Gooden for meeting with us. And Chris would put it out on Twitter and tag Representative Gooden on Twitter. And so I just collected half a dozen of these and put them into a simple montage. Um, it was the best I could think of to give a visual representation to our newspaper of you know, the fact that we were meeting with all these different members of Congress. And so hopefully next time we have lobby days, I'll be able to do some kind of montage of in per pictures of in-person meetings with, you know, our team standing in front of an office, in front of the congressperson's nameplate, in front of the flag and taking a team picture. So um, I am going to, that's the wrong one. I'm going to share um, the news release that I submitted. Okay. Here we go. Um, this was what I submitted on May 19th um, with, you know, the, the template that we use in the upper left-hand corner for immediate release, Wednesday, May 19, 2021 was the date. My it's not contact- on my screen yet. Whoops. No, all I'm seeing is your montage. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Hang on just a sec. Now you can see it, right? Okay. So um, anyway, the template in the upper left for immediate release with the date, the contact, my name, my title, American Promise North Texas organizer, my email address and my phone number. Uh, title, local residents lobby to get big money out of politics. Community members meet with nine Republicans and Democrats to build support. 
And then the Dateline, Dallas, Texas, May 19, 2021. 16 North Texas advocates recently met with seven congressional offices and staff for both Texas senators as part of a nationwide bipartisan lobbying effort to address big money in politics. The volunteers are members of the North Texas Chapter of American Promise, a national cross-partisan organization advocating for an amendment to the US Constitution that would empower Congress and state legislatures to set reasonable limits on political spending. Advocates met personally with Representative Beth Van Dyne and Representative Lance Gooden, as well as staff for both Republican and Democratic lawmakers. Quote, the virtual nature of this year's National Conference and Lobby Day meant that more volunteers could participate. And 16 of our members participated in meetings in nine offices, said local organizer Ann Drum. For most of our volunteers, this was their first meeting with a congressional office, she said. 80% of Americans believe that the US political system is out of control and that the billions of dollars in campaign contributions from corporations, unions, and the wealthiest Americans result in policies that help the rich rather than fostering the common good. That is why these North Texas advocates joined others around the country in virtual lobby visits as part of American Promises National Citizen Leadership Conference. $14.4 billion was spent on federal races in the 2020 election cycle, over twice what was spent in 2016. Out-of-state money is nationalizing local elections, funding negative advertising, and driving a money arms race that neither party can win. The amendment would return to Congress and states the power that they had prior to 2010 to set reasonable limits on political spending. Quote, in order to advance our constitutional amendment, said American Promise President Jeff Clements, we need cooperation and understanding from both sides of the political aisle. American Promise is bringing together all Americans behind the campaign to end big money in politics, and these Citizen Lobby Day visits help the momentum for the 28th Amendment. Members of the North Texas chapter meet on the third Tuesday evening every month and are working in several ways to build a saner political finance system. Anyone interested in getting involved can contact Ann Drum and to learn more, go to. So we, we used, I used a template that was furnished to all of our chapters to help us write news releases for our Lobby Day meetings. And I edited the template at kind of the top half to really personalize it for our North Texas experience. And what I wanted to emphasize here was that we had 16 volunteers, most of them participating in a meeting with their elected official for the first time. And they were meeting with both Republican and Democratic offices. And the two of our meetings were with the elected officials themselves. Those were kind of the key facts that I wanted to insert. Um, and then a lot of it is, is a lot of the rest of it is kind of the template that it, it, where you're going to see in news releases that were submitted by various chapters around the country. So any thoughts, comments about my particular news release? Jump in, because I'm not sure I'm going to see you raise your hand. I have a question. Yes. Um, so that is, um, what, maybe nine, 10 paragraphs long. And how much of that actually got used in the cases that you saw? In other words, how much editing was done? Well, I, I will confess that my news release was not picked up, has not been picked up yet. So um, in one, in, I, I submitted it to three different um, outlets. One is our major Metro pa paper, the Dallas Morning News. Um, another one is, a community weekly newspaper. And then a third one is a little online um, suburban newspaper. And one of those, and I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sure I remember which one, had a character limit. It was an online submission page where I had to cut and paste the text into the box. And it had a 2000 character limit and my news release exceeds 2000 characters. So in that case, I did have to edit it down in order to 
you know, make it fit and, and get it submitted. I, mine has not been picked up yet, but for me, the experience of submitting my first news release, thinking about what kind of photo in this Zoom environment I could produce to illustrate my news release and maybe help draw some attention to it, that was a good exercise for me to get comfortable with the idea that every time we do something, I'm going to submit a news release and a photo. And ultimately, somebody is going to pick it up and call me and I'm going to get a chance to get interviewed. This is great. I'd love to ask a question. Sure. Did, did you try to get an editor on the phone from all three or one or two of the newspapers? The only thing I've had the chance to do is to follow up with one of them with an email to the editor. Um, and he hasn't responded yet. So okay. not yet. Okay. And, and again, it doesn't need to be you, yeah. but someone from your chapter or yeah. something like that. Yeah. I, I just want to throw two ideas out. One is um, it's, it's less likely that someone will publish it if it's sent and not followed up on the phone. Right. Uh, and with the Dallas Morning News, calling a political editor or a political writer, quite honestly, would not get them to publish this, but might interest them now or down the road in doing an article on your group and doing an article on your initiative uh, kind of thing. Yeah. I would suggest also that that thought could be included in your cover email, basically that we're, we're happy to talk with you uh, about any feature angles. Uh, the other thing is that if you're, say your weekly paper, uh, if one of the people lived within the circulation area of that paper, that wasn't you perhaps, uh, that person should be the spokesman. That's the hyper-local uh, angle that a lot of papers are looking for nowadays, especially as they're being uh, basically all purchased by the same company and, uh, and trying to uh, keep it as local as possible in the smaller population areas. I think that's an excellent point that the hyper local angle that all papers are looking for. And one of the things that um, Sam has pointed out is that when we're submitting to a like a, a community newspaper that, is, that only has one representative in Congress, that when we write our news release, we can tweak the language of that news release to highlight the meeting with that member of Congress. So, you know, here in the Dallas area, you know, we have seven members of Congress plus the two senators. So I was really trying to highlight the bipartisan nature of our meetings. But if I were submitting to the little paper in East Texas, where there's only one member of Congress, then I would tweak that news release to really play up the fact that we were meeting with that member of Congress. So I like that hyper local nature. And Bob, tell us where you are. I'm in uh west central massachusetts great thank you for that all okay. right i have a um, yes linda yeah. well i'm told that in our small communities surrounding the twin cities in minnesota that if a picture and a press release or announcement is 300 words or less it's a greater chance of getting published. Uh, do you find that to be true? The shorter it is, the greater the likelihood, and then just uh, try to send people to the website for the rest of the information? I definitely think that's true with letters to the editor. And in fact, with our Dallas paper, we have a, a hard limit of 200 words. Sam, what is your experience with, well, it uh, depends. It depends on the paper, really, in terms of what. So, I want to make one other point. If you have this news release that we just went over, and I'm the editor, 
and you send it to me and I, I'm overwhelmed, but then you call me and you get me on the phone and I still don't publish it, but you then call me again in three months or whenever uh, for another thing, you know, then all of a sudden you're not this anonymous e-blaster, but you're the person I've talked to twice now and getting a little more interesting and maybe I'll uh, have someone call you up and interview you or whatever. Good so point. It's, it's the building the relationship is right. the, the thing rather than make the call, but make the call toward building a relationship, sort of like you would do with a member of Congress. Exactly. All right. Well, Marie Henson, they'll Henson. I'm sorry, Marie Henson, Henselder Kimmel. I think I finally got it. You did. <laughs> she has joined and I know um, that Marie has actually had a news release published recently and I'm going to share my screen again because Marie I've got it up and I would love for you to talk about your experience in submitting and getting your news release published and um, if you would just kind of read through the first part of this, uh, sure. where you had your, your personalized information. Sure. So um, I use the template as well. And our situation was a little bit differently here in New Jersey. We have um, a delegation, a New Jersey delegation of 12 um, in the house and 11, excuse me, 10 of them are Democrats. We have Chris Smith, who's a longtime Republican, who's um, who's been re repeatedly reelected, and then we have Jeff Van Drew, who many of you the name may um, be familiar because he was elected in 2018 as a Democrat, who actually flipped uh, the seat of a retiring Republican. But then, at the end of 2019, when it became clear that he was not going to be reelected as a Democrat, um, he uh, flipped parties to Republican. And so um, our attempt is to, and he did actually co-sponsor HJ uh, Res 2, and we're, we're working with him on, um, and meeting with him to try to get him to um, either co-sponsor HJ Res 1 or consider being in on the uh, alternative uh, amendment language. So I wanted to kind of aim at the whole, the entire state and what we were doing as a state. So let's see, New Jersey residents, American Promise, New Jersey residents lobby to get big money out of politics. Community members meet with Republicans and Democrats to build support. Cherry Hill, New Jersey uh, may, um, I, actually it's a little small for me, Anne, if you can, I don't know if you can expand it. Residents from the New Jersey State Chapter of American Promise joined a nationwide virtual lobbying effort seeking to remove the corrosive effect of money in politics. The lobby meetings, almost 100 nationwide, because I know we were a little short. We were aiming for 100, but I knew we were a little short. Aim to build support in Congress for a constitutional amendment that would allow reasonable limits to be set on political spending. In the last two weeks, American Promise citizen advocates from nine of New Jersey's 12 congressional districts met virtually with the offices of both Senator Booker and Senator Menendez, as well as, and I chose to spell out the names of all the representatives that we had met with in their districts. I'm encouraged by the supportive reception of our request to support a resolution for a constitutional amendment by the offices of our representatives, said Heather Santos of California, New Jersey. And Heather, I believe is on the call. In the last session of Congress, 11 of our 12 congressional representatives and both senators co-sponsored the joint resolutions for the Democracy for All Amendment. We hope to see that same level of support in this Congress. And then it went on to the template language. Um, I added in my quote, common sense solutions supported by the majority of Americans across the political spectrum have failed to be enacted on issue after issue when there's huge political spending by big donors that oppose those solutions. Lobby day meetings like these with members of Congress on both sides of the aisle are a meaningful way to build support for an amendment that will allow the voices of we the people to regain our influence on the laws and policy adopted by our elected Congress, said Marie Henselter Kimmel, MD of Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Um, this is template language about the 14 billion and then Jeff's comment is template language 
And then I added at the end, as regional leaders, Camden County residents, Marie Henselter, Kemmel, and Joan DeVore, Essex County resident, Monica Rodriguez, and Morris County resident, Heather Santos and David Jones, are committed to building the American Promise chapter throughout our state that aims to help New Jersey residents speak up for a saner political finance system. Anyone interested in learning how they can help to grow the American Promise State chapter here in New Jersey can contact, and then I gave my contact information and the AmericanPromise.net. All right, questions, comments for Marie? I'll just give a tip that this is a, um, Insider NJ is a, an online forum that addresses the in-state politics on a day by day. They have a newsletter that goes out. They're very receptive to press releases that have anything to do with politics. And if you search on the web, this one gets pretty good uh, traffic. And if you search on the web, your state may have something like this. So in addition, I did submit this to, um, to two of the big, we have a uh, Gannett, uh, several Gannett owned papers, and then we have a different media conglomerate that that's that controls several of the other papers. Um, I submitted at the end of last week and I have not followed up with editors yet, but I plan to do that. So um, it hadn't been picked up there, but it, but it was, you know, it, it was submitted and, and within 24 hours was was on this site. And 183 visits so far. So I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> Did you publish um, your news release to social media? Um, I did not right away do that because I was on vacation last week when I did this. So um, I do plan to put it, it you know, on our uh, Facebook page and um, Twitter as well. All could right, say, go ahead, Sam. Could you say something about the papers you will call? It might be a paper who has various papers and they might reach some of the members of Congress on your list, but not mm -hmm. the others. I'm mm -hmm. trying to think their thoughts about why this matters to my papers. Yeah, um, I'm going to, I do plan on calling the, uh, the Gannett, no, wait a minute. It's New Jersey.com. Um, they have a paper down in South Jersey, which is one of the bigger papers that's in Jeff Andrews district. So I do actually plan to call they, when you submit to them for letters to the editor and op-eds, they actually have a separate submission email and so on. So I'm going to contact that editor directly because I really would like it to be, um, in his, you know, sphere, uh, the other papers, um, the, uh, the Republican is, uh, we don't have a meeting yet, although I have a constituent who I'm talking into possibly requesting a meeting, a delay, like Ian said, the uh, lobby day, <laughs> there might be the lobby day two months. Um, so I'm going to try to get it into a paper um, down in, in, in his district, which is sort of a weird, one of these gerrymandered shapes. And there are a couple different papers that could possibly be in his district. <laughs> Just FYI, you'd mentioned um, Chris Smith earlier. I don't know if that's who you meant. Yeah. He's been in Congress for 42 years. And he doesn't meet with his, he doesn't meet with his constituents. Very interesting. But it's a very Republican district after Jerry, you know, it's the Democrat at gerrymandering in, in New Jersey. So that's the, that's the packed Republican district. Does anybody else have any questions or comments for Marie? Does anyone else have a news release that you want to share? Did anyone submit one or even draft one just thinking about submitting it that you would like to read to us? All right, I don't see any takers. All right. Well, even the lobby days are basically over. Um, look for opportunities to submit a news release. Um, maybe after a lobby day meeting with a staff person, you follow up and you get an in-person meeting with the member of Congress. So that would be an opportunity to take a picture, 
and write a news release and submit it. So think about opportunities. Um, Lobby day is just one, but it's not the only one. So now I'm, I'm, I want to do that role play with the editor and, you know, sending the news release to one or two, seven, one or two weekly newspapers. And I don't hear from them in a couple of days. So I'm going to call them to make sure they saw it and discuss it with them. And if I'm, I, I'm going to have Marnie play the role of the editor. And I'm calling a couple of days after I submitted the news release. And Marnie is going to tell me that she did not get it. So I, I have thought about what I want to say to my editor who didn't see my news release. What, what's kind of the quick conversation I can have to pique the editor's interest in the content of my news release and then read it when I send it again. So uh, Marnie, I'm calling you, calling editor one ringy dingy, two ringy Hello. dingy. Hi, um, my name's Ann Drum. I'm with the North Texas chapter of American Promise. And I'm calling to follow up about a news release that I emailed through your website form a couple of days ago about meetings that we had with members of Congress. Did you receive that news release? I don't believe I did. Well, the news release was about 16 of our local volunteers meeting with nine members of Congress, both Republicans and Democrats, to talk about big money and politics. We're advocating for a bipartisan solution to out of control political spending, which is fueling the toxicity of our politics. I'd like to resend the release and make sure it gets to you. Where would you like me to send it? Okay, you can send it to Marnie, that's M-A-R-N-I-E-W at AmericanPromise.net. Great, thank you so much. I will send it just as soon as we um, hang up from this conversation. You may know that over $14 billion was spent on federal races last year, and a lot of that money was coming into Texas from out of state, effectively nationalizing our local elections, even down to city council races. We also know that foreign actors are putting money into our elections. The Supreme Court took away the power of Congress and legislatures to set limits on out-of-state money, and we want an amendment that will return that power to them. We think regulation of Texas elections should be under the control of the Texas legislature. So do you have any questions for me about the amendment that we are advocating for? Um, I don't think so. Well, I will send the news release to you. I also have a photo um, of some of our meetings with members of Congress, so I will send that as well. And Excellent. please let me know if you need any additional information. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Great. Thank you so much, Anne. Great. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. So that's our little brief role play. Uh, I tried to hit some of the highlights without going on too long. Um, any questions, comments about that follow-up phone call to the editor? I think that it was very good. Um, one of the things that you did was you got the email address and um, and you arranged for that to be sent. And the thing that's good about that is that whatever you were able to put on at the end, if the editor did not have time and needed to turn that call off, you had gotten through the essential stuff. Right. It's very possible that that second paragraph might have gotten interrupted. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're right. You know, the other thing I like about getting the email address, these, the online forms I found did, generally did not allow me to attach a photo. Um, one of the things I figured out though, is that I can upload the photo and then I can include, if there is space in the online form, a link to download the form, to the photo. So I could say, you know, photo, photo available colon and then a hyperlink. And then I just need to make sure that when I uploaded the photo, 
that I set the permission so that anyone with the link can download the photo. So that was, you know, that was one way I could get around the inability to attach a photo to the online form. But then when I, you know, make the phone call and get the email address to send the email directly to the editor, then I can also attach the photo to the email. And just to clarify that you were sending it in Google as a Google Drive link? Yes, that's what okay. I did. And, and you do have to be careful to, to set the permission because right. if the permission isn't set properly, then what when they click on the link, they're gonna get a message saying, you have to ask the owner for permission to access this document and they're not gonna jump through that hoop. So set the permission properly when you, if you're gonna do it that way. Any other comments, questions? Yes, Ben. Yeah, I loved that it felt kind of like the inverse of reporting. Like usually a journalist will call you up and say, hey, I've got some questions for you. Do you have time? Whereas this is like, hey, I just sent you a release. Um, do you have time to ask me some questions? So <laughs> I like that. If I was, I used to report for a little local newspaper and that would have caught, caught my eye. So I like it. All right, good. Any other comments about that little role play? Let me throw out a couple of thoughts. One is at the end, you could ask permission to give a call in a day or two to see if they got it and had a chance to read it and have any questions. That's kind of getting a permission. The other thing, you know, I just want to throw this out generically. I thought the call was terrific, but other things we can think about is, uh, you know, all nine of our meetings and we were with two of the Republican representatives themselves. They were all on HJ Res 2. Are you familiar with HJ Res 2? The question's going to be no. The answer's going to be no, I'm not. And then you, well, can I tell you about it briefly? Uh, and then I'll, there's this opening because you ask them a question. It's a legitimate question to which the answer is going to be no, which then opens that door. Uh, uh, that kind of thing. And then the only other thing that I just want to just throw out, just as ideas, nobody needs to do any of these things or this way, but kind of in, in the ether is the, our democracies in big trouble. And a reporter and a newspaper person would know that piece of it. And the whole notion of 16 uh, North Texans meeting with nine different Congressional House and Senate offices is like kind of an antidote uh, to that um, a script uh, kind of thing. And that that might be interesting to on a good day to the right editor, even if it's a little paper, when it comes to maybe even assigning a, a writer to go a little more deeply into this group and this issue and this action kind of thing. Thanks. Yeah. But if you changed nothing, it would be great. All right. Any other discussion about that? Um, I have a I have a question. So so what would be um, what would be a suggestion about maybe trying to write a short article uh, for a weekly paper, a smaller paper locally to get, you know, to get an article. Maybe they don't really have reporters that are gonna call and interview you to, to get an article written, but you could actually submit an article. Um, would it be, would that be a situation where we'd wanna pare something down to 300 or 400 words to put it out there, maybe take most of, take our press release and, and trim it and um, concentrate it to the most important information about what we're doing and the activity? Well, again, it, it, it depends on the paper, but my main, let me say a couple of things. My main thing would be getting familiar with that paper. For example, my little weekly in Princeton, New Jersey, I think it allows 400 words for a letter to the editor. So already it's it's in, in good shape. And 
but and the, the other thing I want to say is um, if I'm coaching a group on letters to the editor, I focus on getting a good letter written. If I'm coaching a group on op-eds and I'm going to include articles in that same category, my mind goes to getting a relationship with the editor. Okay. Uh, and so I think it really goes back to, you know, you can like, you could call it writing 300 word article on spec, but until there's a relationship where the editor's kind of saying, this is something, you know, I'm shorthanded, but if you could write something for us, boom, that, that's where that, so getting to know what they have, you know, that I think my little local paper, I'm going to make up that they have two reporters kind of thing that do all the articles or something like that. Get familiar with what, what, what they offer, what they have, and trying, I, I would go for a relationship on the phone uh, before I necessarily wrote. Okay. It's just a thought. Because mm -hmm. I love the angle, you know, just what, what came up earlier in the call. And now also you were saying about the, Sam used the hook of saying, well, you know, people are aware that in the ether, we need to, to fix our democracy. So we need to fix our democracy. And this is what local citizens are doing about it. Um, and you also made the comment, I think from your selection from the book, it said, you know, I, with, with zero, something about zero budget. Um, and so we're fighting against big money with zero budget, just our, you know, just our cell phones and our computers and our, and our voices. Um, so I think that would be another powerful point to make in the but, piece. But the more you can get the editor on the phone briefly and begin to have that conversation so they see that angle and that importance because okay. they're you know it's kind of like I yeah. assume their day is a little like drinking from a fire hose and so the more you can slow them down for a moment and uh, in a sense get them to focus and trust basically. Hmm. Maria I like your David versus Goliath framing. Mm -hmm. I made a note of that. Fighting against big money with zero budget. Right. Just our phones and our computers. Um, you know, one thing I do think is important, and, you know, Sam, when you're talking about a newspaper may only have two reporters. I mean, we're all aware of the pressure on the traditional business model of journalism and how that has shaped the journalism landscape. One of the things I tell volunteers who are submitting letters to the editor is they need to subscribe to the newspaper. I honestly think that one of the reasons I sometimes get my letters published is because I've been subscribing to the newspaper for many, many years. So we need to think about how we can support the journalistic outlets that we are asking to help us carry our message. All right, well, we are drawing um, to the end of our meeting. Um, I wanna make sure that Marnie has put the link in the, to the, to the sign up sheet in the chat. Marnie, it's there. And so again, we're inviting you to sign up to attend one or more of these team meetings for the next four months. And then if you've already done that, think about somebody else in your chapter that you can recruit. So, you know, if you're participating in this letters to the editor team meeting every month, think about who you can recruit to participate in the upcoming series of social media trainings or the organizing events trainings or one of the others. So this team will be me again on Thursday, June 24th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. And we're gonna be back to writing letters to the editor. So if between now and then you submit a letter to your to the editor of your local paper and particularly if you get one published 
um, bring it to the meeting and share it with us. And thanks for coming tonight. And I hope everyone has a safe and enjoyable Memorial Day weekend. So thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cool. Bye. Good night. Thank you.